think this is on. There we go. Good morning. Glad to have you with us this morning. Thank you for joining us for worship here at Flagstone. We've got some more folks coming in. We're going to be glad to start worship with you guys here in just a moment. For those of you joining us online, thank you for joining us for worship this morning. We're glad to have you as well, wherever you are. Thank you for choosing to worship with us today. As you're coming in uh, to the room here, as we're getting ready to get started, I want to um, remind you of a few things. First of all, in every other chair here in the worship center, we have um, a copy of our bulletins. We'd like for every single family uh, to make sure to take one of these, uh, find out what's going on with the Flagstone family. We got, it's just full of information about some events that are coming up uh, for our church family. We want you to know about those things. Um, sign up to be a part of them. There's a couple of things for sure that I want to draw your attention to this morning. Um, one is for our guests, if this is one of your first times here, or maybe you've been here a few times and just haven't taken the time to do this yet, I'd like for you to click on this QR code that's up here in the top right corner. And when you do that, that'll bring up a, a form on your phone where you can fill out your contact information for us. We would really appreciate if you'd take the time to do that for us this morning. Uh, we just want to know who you are, where you're from. We might send you a note back, say thank you for coming, being a part of our worship, but we're not going to bombard you with texts and calls and emails or anything like that. But we just want to know who you are. We want to we answer any questions you have about Flagstone. So please do that. If you haven't done that already, it won't take you very, very long to do that. Uh, we'd appreciate that this morning. The other thing that I want to draw, especially our, our church family's attention to, is there is um, there's a QR code right down here for volunteers for uh, uh, communion servers. We used to have... Um, Several a, a list of, of several volunteers to help out with passing the trays when we take communion together. And um, once COVID happened, you know, the list kind of went away. So we're needing to, to redo that list and get more volunteers for that. So if you, would, if, if you wouldn't uh, mind taking the time just to click on that QR code and sign up to help us with serving communion every Sunday, we would appreciate your help with that. want to make sure to draw those two things to your attention this morning. Speaking of communion, we will be taking communion together today. When that time comes, we'll have thoughts and, and a prayer for the bread. We'll pass out trays that have cups in them, and each cup has a little piece of bread in it, and you'll just take your cup, eat the bread, put the cup back in the tray, and pass it on. We'll have another prayer for the juice, and we'll do the same thing. When the tray comes to you, just take your cup, drink the juice, and put it back in and pass it on. That's how we'll take communion together today when that time comes. So why don't you know about that ahead of time? And the last thing I want to share with you is if you've got kids with you, we're so glad that you chose to bring your kids to worship with us today. We're thankful that that's important enough to you uh, to bring them to worship with us. If it would be helpful for you, you are welcome at any time during our worship service to take your kids over to our children's center. They, they'll have classes and Bible lessons and activities for them while you continue to be here and worship with us. And at any time during our singing, during our community time, whenever is convenient for you, if you want to take advantage of that, we got volunteers ready to take care of your kids. So just walk right across the lobby to our children's check-in and get your kids checked in if, if you need to do that. If you want to keep your kids with you, you're more than welcome to do that. If it would help, we have some activity bags available, and those are on the table right across the lobby. Uh, and you just walk right out these doors and right across the lobby and pick up an activity bag. It's got coloring sheets and other things for your kids. While you continue to engage and worship with us, that'll keep them engaged as well. So why don't you be aware of those things. Again, I want to thank everyone for being a part of our worship this morning. We had such an awesome time uh, worshiping and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus together last week on Easter. I hope you had a great Easter weekend. I hope the time that you got to spend with family and friends was, was a blessing for you. If you were a part of our worship or if you watched us online last week and you saw uh, Cassie Caton up here painting uh, during our worship time and you didn't get to see the final product, you, hopefully you saw it when you walked in the door this morning. It's, it's out there in our lobby and I wanted you to make sure uh, to get to see that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to go back and watch last week's worship service and see how we incorporated her painting into our, into our worship time together. It was really awesome. So I uh, just wanted you to be aware of that. I'm ready to worship with you guys. I hope you are as well. We're going to be singing praises today. We're going to be taking communion today. We're going to be spending time on the Word today. We're going to be blessed by being here and worshiping our God and connecting with each other. So I'm glad that you chose to be here this morning. Let's pray. Let's ask God to bless our time of worship. And then let's begin praising Him together with our songs. Father God, thank you for letting us be here today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be in this place and worshiping with you and, and meeting new people and reconnecting with people. It's just a blessing to be here today. Thank you for the people that are joining us online as well. Thank you that they have tuned other things out and, and are, are choosing to be here with us, even if it's in a different room, uh, that they're choosing to connect with us as we worship together. And God, I pray that you help us today to be focused on you. There's other things that we probably have to get done today. There's other things on our schedules and our agendas Help us, God, to tune those things out for, for a few minutes and, and engage in worship with you and engage in connection with each other here in this place. God, I pray for those who are with us this morning who are struggling. There's, there's 
problems, there's struggles, there's worries, there's fears, there's sin, there's guilt in their lives. And they're carrying those burdens. They brought those burdens with them this morning. And I pray that as we worship together, whether it's the songs that we sing, whether it's the time that we spend in your word, whether it's a conversation with somebody else, that, that you help those of us who came here weighed down with things on our minds and our hearts today, that you help us to let go of those things, to share them with this church family so that we can get some help, but also to, to give those things to you and allow you to set us free from those things. So I pray that that's what happens as we worship today. Most of all, God, I pray that we bring glory to your name, that we honor you, that, that we express with our hearts how thankful we are that you are our God. So we give this morning to you, God, and we pray that your presence fills this place as we worship together. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's get on our feet. Let's worship together this morning. Your light broke through my eyes, restored and seen joy. Your grace fell like a rain and made this as you live. You have turned my morning into dancing. You have turned.
supreme. Praise the Lord Almighty, He is Lord, He is God in thee. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Your only Son, no sin to hide, but you have sinned. Marshall is starting a new series, uh, Tangled, um, and as I was thinking through what I, I might say, I was reminded of a time in college when I went cave splunking. Um, in case you don't know what cave splunking, it's where apparently you go for fun, for pleasure, to a cave, and then you kind of crawl in some small spaces. You're probably going to get it wet. You might see some uh, wildlife and maybe get bitten by something. It's, it's invigorating, and some people really enjoy it. Uh, I personally felt really claustrophobic, um, and I, I didn't go back again, to be honest. Um, and I, I bring up that story is because every time uh, in my history of my life, someone asked me to untangle something. I feel like I'm back in that cave, wet and bugs covered on me. I just, I can't untangle this item. Like, my dad would have me try to untangle Christmas lights. Like, nope, I'm just going to crunch all of them like I'm done. Or my daughters will come to me with the little little kid jewelry, and there, there's no way this is going to get untangled. I'm just going to go to the store and buy you a new one. Like, this is not going to happen. I'm back in the cave. Um, and I, I bring it up to, to suggest how God doesn't do that. When we present our mess to God, he is not afraid to get in the cave and actually sit with us in the muck and in, in the wetness. And we were just talking in, in my Bible class about, um, if, you, if you look in your Bibles at Psalm 78, Psalm 78 is a beautiful example of how, uh, of sort of this relationship history between God and Israel. And there's a bunch of different passages like this in the Old Testament where it kind of lays out the history of, of, of God and Israel and how Israel just unfortunately kept forgetting about God. They kept going to these other gods. They kept resorting back to sin over and over again. And um, I, I was thinking about this, and I'm like, you know, I, I, I'm, if I'm putting myself in Israel's shoes, I'm sure they didn't just wake up and decide, hey, I'm going to go worship some Canaanite gods today because I'm bored. 
Uh, Yahweh is kind of, I'm, I'm going to go over here. Like, no, it, it was a slow, quiet fade to where the, maybe they got to know some people from other lands and they got to know their customs. They started hanging out maybe or they started intermarrying like they weren't supposed to maybe and they just started slowly getting and dabbling into these other sins, getting into these other gods. And it, it's so slow uh, for us too, isn't it? When we get into sin ourselves, it's often really subtle. It's really quiet and it happens maybe over time and we, before we notice it, our lives and our hearts are tangled up in something else besides God. And it's really hard to, to untangle that. But I, I'm so thankful that we have a God, like I was saying, who can jump into that mess with us. Um, if you look at, in your Bibles at 1 Corinthians um, chapter 11, you'll see you know, what, what uh, Paul talks about with the Lord's Supper. And I want to draw our attention just to a couple verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 27, says, Whoever, <coughs> whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And the context of this um, is when a lot of the Corinthians were maybe overeating at the Lord's Supper whenever they would actually eat meals, that some people weren't getting any food because the other people were overeating. And so Paul, you know, part of this, he's saying like, hey, examine yourself. Be aware of how you're, you're selfishly not letting other people get their needs met. And this really hits me right in the heart. Selfishness, is, it can really get to me too. So I'm so thankful for the Lord's Supper that we can spend some intentional time looking at you know, our hearts, looking at, you know, am I tangled up in selfishness or how have I been recently to my, my partner? How have I been to my kids? How, how am I glorifying God with my job recently? Wh where am I at, Lord? Please show me. Please untangle me. Help me, Lord. And again, he isn't afraid to get into the mess with us. So I'm so thankful for a heavenly father for that. Let, let's go to him now in, in prayer. God, thank you so much for Jesus. Thank you that because of Jesus, that we can come back to you, that you, you take the mess of our lives and, and you help us to, to come back to you. And, and sometimes, Father, it's so hard to, to realize where we are at and it's hard to look at our hearts sometimes. And I just pray that we just take a moment to reflect right now that you show us an area to where we could come back to you, an area where we could glorify you more. Um, please, God, help us to, to glorify you and with our hearts, but also with our actions. And we're so thankful for Jesus and his, his life and his sacrifice and his resurrection that allows us to come back to you. Thank you, Father, for not abandoning us, but coming with us and sitting with us. Thank you for Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. My Jesus, I love thee, I know.
pray with me for the cup? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you now and we are reminded of Jesus' blood and what that blood means for us, that we can be reconciled to you even though we are sinners and we were dead to you and spiritually dead that you have the, the link that you have gone to sacrifice your own son to bring us back to you father in your loving arms thank you so much for your love and thank you for loving us even if we don't deserve it father uh, please forgive us when we fail you and please help us to to come back to you um, as you call us thank you father for jesus in his name i pray amen In need of grace, in need of love, in need of mercy rain down from high above, in need of strength, in need of peace, in need of things that only you can give to me. stand up for a song for Marshall Gittes Untangled.
As Luke already mentioned this morning, we're talking about things that, that get tangled, right? And I don't know what comes to your mind when you think of things that, that get tangled. There's all sorts of things uh, that I can think of in my life that get tangled. And uh, unlike, unlike Luke, uh, when somebody brings a tangle to me, like I'm, I'm the one that will sit there and, and work on it. I'll keep working on it until, you know. Now maybe I'll end up cutting it. I'm not going to the store and buying a new one, but I'll, I'll you know, I work on it for a while. But think about the different things that, that tangle us up. How many of you, you know, your electrical cords, at least behind your television or other electronic appliances, look something like that? There's some of you I know. There's some of you are like, there's no way in this world that I would let my electrical cords look like that. But that looks a lot like I, that. Looks very familiar to me. Uh, garden hoses. Anybody keep your garden hoses untangled? God bless you. I, mine. Uh, is always tangled and it doesn't matter how I try to wrap it up it starts twisting around and and getting turned in different directions Uh, extension cords the same way I have a giant orange extension cord in my house that I use for a variety of things and every time I try to be as meticulous as I can in wrapping that thing up where it won't be tangled the next time that I use it and as soon as I drag it back out again and plug it in and start walking across the yard I get about that far and it yanks me back and there's this whole Not, right? Anybody else struggle with that or is that just me? Okay, I'm just checking. All right. Tangled hair. Anybody had tangled hair? This has never been a problem for me. Uh, I haven't had those except for uh, I think one time I might have fallen asleep uh, when I was a kid with gum in my mouth and that ended up in my hair a little bit. It it, it combed out or we cut it out. I don't remember now. But how many of y'all tangled hair is a big deal, especially if you got the little girls and stuff? Maybe Maybe it's a problem for adults now, too. I'm not sure how much the, the tangled mess is. Earbuds. I know now we're doing the AirPods, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother us as much. But how many you, you cord, you put the headphones in, and those things are tangled? And, like, you, again, same thing. I do the same thing with mine. I wrap them up. I'm like, there's no way it's going to get tangled this time. And as soon as I take them back out again and try to stretch them out, now there's different knots, and I, I can't. They only go this far because they're all knotted together, and i got to untie those things, Right? Maybe, and so, so as we start thinking about things that are tangled, there's some of these things you're looking at going, I know exactly, that's exactly where my mind went, I'm thinking of something that's tangled up. The, the thing that I think of, maybe it came to your mind, was one of my favorite scenes from the movie Christmas Vacation, where Clark takes out the Christmas lights, he's like, whoop, got a little knot here. Here, Russ, you can work that out, right? I mean, how many of us go to the trouble if we put up Christmas lights and Christmas decorations, we work on and it, it's, it's like it doesn't even matter. They even, they even sell these things where you can wrap your Christmas lights around them so they won't get tangled. I've used it. You know what happens? It gets tangled. And it's so frustrating when things get tangled up in our lives, right? I mean, it, when we have these cords, when we have these, these things that get all messy, especially when we felt like we went to the trouble of those things not getting messy and tangled. Now, I take this a step further. There's, there's, there's sometimes things that... that get tangled up and we, we never saw it coming. There's some of these things we talk about like, you know what, that's probably going to get tangled. I can see the knot forming uh, and, and it's just going to happen. But there's sometimes that, that what's frustrating about the tangles is not just the tangle itself, but that we weren't ready for it. And it's interrupting our lives somehow. It's, it, it's, it's slowing us down. We got to work on it instead of working on whatever else that we were going to work on. Um, I remember when I was in college, we were going uh, rappelling one time and there was this girl who had really long uh, curly hair, and I didn't know this was a thing until this happened, but if, if you don't know what repelling is, you hook up, you know, basically throw a rope over the side of a mountain, tie one end of it to a tree, you hook it up to some rings that you're wearing and go 
walking down the side of the mountain. So we were doing that. We, we had, we, you know, several of us, uh, of us had already gone, and this girl, it was her first time to go repelling with us, and she had this long curly hair, and the wind was blowing, and she's going down, and the wind just kind of blew her hair across, and that hair got in that ring where the rope was, and then she was stuck, and, and like her head's kind of yanked like this, and couldn't go anywhere because of the, the tension that was on the rope in the ring. We had to throw down another rope beside her, rappel down a little ways, and work on getting that loose. I think we might have had to cut a little bit. I can't remember for sure. But we had to go down beside her and work on getting her hair out of that tangle. Obviously, she didn't see it coming. She's just rappelling down. Woohoo! I'm having fun. Look how high up I am. You know, it just, it just happened. I saw a video clip I wanted to show to you guys um, today. There's, there, this is in 2017. The Irish University's Indoor Track Championship. And this guy named Angus Meldon was running this indoor, it's the 800 meter race, and he's running. I want you to see, go ahead and show it, guys, if we can. Watch what happens. Did you see what happened? He's, he's leading. He's winning the race. This 800 meters, it's the last final lap, and he's running. And there was a guy, the, they put the pole vault pit right next to the track, and there's a guy just practicing on his pole vault. So it's not the actual pole vault pole that you got to get over. It's an elastic kind of rope thing that, that they just practice on. And if you ever, you know, watch the clip again, you can see it like they're running in slow motion. This guy's pole vaulting, and he just kind of hits that thing, and it snaps off and goes flying around right when the guy who's winning the race is running by, and it completely wraps up his legs, and he comes in third. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine going back home? Did you win the race? No, I came in third. Oh, really? thought you were doing pretty well. Yeah, uh, I got tangled. What? Yeah, in a, a, a pole vault rope. What? I mean, you wouldn't even expect that to happen, right? Sometimes the tangles come out from nowhere. There's no way he could have expected that. There's no way that he could have seen that coming. And that's what happens to us sometimes too, isn't it? And then not necessarily, I mean, you can see where we're going with this. It's not necessarily that my extension cords get tangled or my garden hose gets tangled and I didn't see it coming. We have tangles and messes in our lives. We have things that, that creep up on us, that, that wrap us up, that, that almost bind us and imprison us sometimes and we didn't see it coming and then we look around we're like um oh, I'm, I'm in this mess how did I even get here we deal with you know emotional struggles we deal with temptations we deal with guilt we deal with problems in our relationships there's all sorts of things that that tangle up our lives and they and they keep us from living the free life that I believe that that God wants us to live and maybe it's our own choices. Maybe we can look back and go, okay, if I take an honest look at this, I can see how this happened. And maybe it's, it's the choices of other people. It wasn't something that we even planned on. It's stuff that happened to us. Maybe it's just life that happens. There's no real explanation. But now I'm just looking at where I am right now, and I'm just, I'm bound up. And I'm in this mess that I never intended to be in. And it came out from nowhere. And now I've got to figure out how to get out of it. And this is what we want to talk about today and over the next few weeks, is getting ourselves untangled recognizing that there's tangles in our lives and recognizing where some of those messes come from and, and what we can do about it. And so this morning we're going we're to talk just kind of in, in kind of some broad terms. Let's, let's look at some of the messes that we get into and, and how we can, we can untangle some of those things. We're going to get more specific over the next few weeks about specific things that we get, many of us get tangled up in. But I want to show you that, that Scripture even talks about getting untangled. Or I guess getting tangled and in, in, in then what we need to do about it. So if you got your Bibles, your Bible apps, uh, feel free to go to the book of Hebrews. That's towards the end of the Bible, uh, a few books away from the end of the Bible. And Hebrews chapter 12 is where we're going to be this morning. And uh, when you read through the book of Hebrews, when you get to chapter 10, the author of Hebrews talks about, he's talking about faith and, and acting on our faith and, and staying true to what we believe in about Jesus and about God and about his presence in our lives. And he, and he basically is challenging his readers, don't stop the things that you're doing. Qu don't quit doing the things that God has called you to do. Don't quit believing in God. 
And don't quit connecting with other people who have that same faith as well. And then he goes into chapter 11. He says, here's this whole list of people, if you go back through Scripture, that have faith. And they held on to their faith. They held on to their trust in God in spite of a whole bunch of different, difficult circumstances. And then he gets to chapter 12, which is where I want you to look today. In verse 1, he says this, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, talking about the people they just talked about in chapter 11, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. The author of Hebrews says that we need to throw off the things that might keep us from being the people that God wants us to be and living the way that God wants us to live, but also to throw off the sin, as he says, the, the, the sin that easily entangles. It's, it's problems and struggles and temptations and, and sin and, and just issues that enter our lives. And, and even as, as Luke mentioned earlier in our community thoughts, a lot of times it happens slowly. I mean, let's be honest, there's problems that come in our lives. Well, I guess the guy running the, the track meet, that was a problem that came real quick, right? And it was obvious, and he got tangled up in it really quickly. But a lot of times, think about where our tangles and our messes come from. It's not something that just happens out of the blue. It's, it's things that happen slowly. They creep in. It's a choice here or there, and then making that choice again, and then being around those people again, and then doing that again. And, and pretty soon, we are wrapped up in this temptation, the struggle, or the consequences that come from it. Sometimes it's, it's other people. They're making choices, and it's affecting us, and it's affecting us even more, and they continue to, to take that action and make that choice, and, it, and we find ourselves wrapped up in this struggle. It didn't happen immediately. It happened over time, but we, we stay in it. We stay wrapped up in it, and maybe even sometimes we know we shouldn't, we shouldn't be in this mess. We, and that, that's where some of the frustration comes. I shouldn't be tangled right now. I shouldn't be wrapped up in what I'm, in, what I'm wrapped up in, yet I am. So what I want to do this morning is just for, for a few minutes, like, let, let's be honest about how that happens. How do we get into these messes? How do we, when we find ourselves tangled up because of choices that we made, how do we get there? How do we get to that point? And I, I think if we, if we, took an honest look at our own lives. If, if, if I'm just right now in this moment recognizing there is, there is a habit that I'm in, there's a relationship that I'm in, there's a temptation that I keep going back to, whatever it is, that I continue to be tangled up in. That if I would take a step back and take an honest look at that, I can start seeing how that mess, how that tangle got there in the first place. And so one of the things that I think we have in common when we find ourselves tangled by, as the, the Hebrew author puts it, tangled by sin and tangled by the consequences of sin. One, one reason is I just don't pay attention. I don't pay attention to the fact that I'm about to get tangled up. I'm just not watching. I'm, I'm distracted by something else. I'm not realizing what, the, what kind of effect my choices are making on me or, or what kind of effect they're making on other people. I'm so focused Let's be honest, I'm so focused on how much I'm enjoying whatever it is that I'm doing that I don't recognize the kind of consequences that it's creating. I don't see the kind of results that, that, that it's having. Or I might be so focused on one particular aspect of my life that I'm not recognizing there's this other part of me that's getting tangled up and becoming a mess. So if you go back in the Old Testament, there's a guy I talked about in the book of Judges. His name is Samson. And Samson was, this, was blessed by God with, with amazing strength, supernatural strength. One of the weaknesses that Samson had, besides apparently having his hair cut, was women. And Samson, you know, he, he got involved with, with one woman that he shouldn't have gotten involved with, and they were, they were supposed to get married, and then that ended up falling apart, and he ended up killing a bunch of people, a bunch of her family as part of the process. And then later on, he starts a relationship with a prostitute, and the people that you know, the, the people that he killed earlier were, were still mad about that and some other things that he'd done. They tried to capture him, and he almost gets captured and, and killed because he's wrapped up in this relationship with this woman. He ends up breaking up with her, and he gets together with this other woman named Delilah, and he's not supposed to be in a relationship with her, but he is. And they're, you know, they're together, and they're sexually involved, and she keeps trying to find out how she can trap him and how she can get him killed. And, and he keeps kind of putting her off and, going and, and giving her fake answers, uh, and, and all those things keep backfiring and while, while she's trying to either have him bound up or have him attacked or whatever it is. And finally, he never walks away from this woman. 
There's like three or four times where, where she says, how would someone, Samson, if, if someone wanted to trap you and kill you, how would they do that? And he would give her these fake answers. Now, it would be a red flag to most of us, right? <laughs> if the person you're in a relationship with is like, you know what, how would somebody kill you? Oh, well, let me tell you. That, that should be something, a warning sign. And it wasn't for Samson. And she keeps asking and keeps giving her these fake answers. And then he finally tells her the truth. I've made a commitment to God. If my hair is ever cut, God's presence leaves me and I'll lose all my strength. And that's what she has done. And he got tangled up in this mess because he, never, he just didn't pay attention. He didn't realize he didn't pay attention to the kind of mess he's getting himself into. And the choices that he was making and how he kept making those same choices over and over again. And what a mess that was creating in his life. Another example, a different example would be David. We talked about David multiple times. David was this amazing king, this amazing warrior. He defeated Goliath. He killed all these different uh, enemies of God. He wrote most of the Psalms and, and is even called the man after God's own heart. There's so many different things that are good about David. But if you look at, at David's life, if you, if you keep reading, especially in 2 Samuel, you keep reading about some of the different things that happened to him later on in his kingship. He had multiple wives. One of them hated his guts. He's got issues with his kids where, where one of his kids uh, ended up raping his stepsister and her full-blooded brother ended up killing him and then later on trying to overthrow David's kingdom and David had to run for his life. He had family issues. And I'm just wondering if part of the reason that David has such a struggle as a father it's because that was something that he wasn't paying attention to. I'm so focused on these battles, and I'm so focused on being the popular King David, and I'm so focused on making my plans for the temple and whatever else is on his mind. Hey, you got a family over here you need to take care of. Ah, da, 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 da. I'm worried about this right now. And maybe he didn't articulate it that way. Maybe he didn't completely ignore his kids. But, man, if you read through David's family and what happened with his children, there's a huge gap in his life when it came to his family. Why? Part of the reason, I think, is because he didn't pay attention. And his family became a tangled mess because he wasn't watching. He wasn't paying attention. He wasn't focused. And I think one of the reasons that we find ourselves in some of the tangles and the messes that we're in is because we, we didn't watch. We weren't paying attention. We almost feel like we got caught out of the blue. And if we, if we would take an honest look at where we're at in our lives and this tangled web that we're in, we can see I didn't pay attention here and here and here. And I should have. Maybe the reason that we get tangled up is, you know, one of the reasons that I just, I justify my choices. And we talked about this a few weeks ago when we were going through our IDK series. And we were talking about how sometimes I don't know why I keep having the same problems over and over again. So I, I'm not going to go into too much detail today. If you want to know more about that, I invite you to go back on our YouTube channel and, and look at that lesson. We talked about how, you know, these, these struggles that we keep having and why we keep having them. But one of the reasons that we talked about is because I, I justify the choices I'm making. I rationalize why it's okay for me to be engaged in this particular activity. It's something that God doesn't want me to do. It's something that's hurtful to me. It's something that's hurtful to somebody else. It's something that's going to have some long-lasting consequences. And I'll still justify it. And I'm like, I, but it's, it's not that big a deal. It's only this one time. It's only one more time. Other people are doing worse than me. I deserve to do this. I deserve this more than they do it's not really going to be a problem. They deserve for me to do this to them. And whatever it is, however we try to rationalize and justify it, the more that I justify the ungodly choices and the hurtful choices I'm making, the more those actions and those attitudes start to, start to tangle around my heart and start to affect how I view other people and how I view myself. It starts to affect the health of my relationships and my connections with other people. It starts to affect my faith and my connection with God. And I get tangled up in these sinful choices, these hurtful choices, because I keep justifying why it's okay for me to keep doing those things. So maybe it's because I'm not paying attention. Maybe it's because I'm justifying the choices I'm making. Or maybe, maybe I'm in this tangle because I just, I don't do anything about it. I know it's a problem. I recognize that it's an issue. 
or it's going to be an issue, and I just, it, I, I just don't do anything about it. I see the problem. I see, that, that, that I see where this is going to end up, but I keep going forward with that same action. I mentioned a few minutes ago this giant orange extension cord that I have at my house, right? And when I plug it in and I start dragging it across the yard to go do something, and I see, I can, I can see sometimes the knot is there and, and more tension is going to make that a worse knot. It's going to tangle it up even more, right? I can see it. And I just keep pulling. If I pull hard enough, I'll get enough length on this thing where it, it won't be that big a deal. The knot is still there. It's still a tangle. I, it'll be fine. And then I get frustrated, and then I get irritated because I can't go the, the distance that I need to go with this electrical thing that I need to go with because I didn't do anything about the tangle in the first place. Now, I know that sounds really simplistic, but guys, this is, this is what many of us struggle with all the time is seeing a problem in our lives, seeing a mess that either we're headed towards or is already there and just going, ah, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to, I'm going to stay in this relationship. I'm going to keep taking these actions. I'm going to keep using these words. I'm going to keep doing the same thing. And I'll just deal with I'll just stay tangled up. And we don't do anything about it. It'll be fine. Or that's just the way things are. I'll just, I'll just continue to be in debt. I guess this is just the way our family is going to have to be. I guess this is just the way our marriage is going to have to be. I guess I'll always have this addiction. I guess I'll always have this habit because I'm not going to do anything about it. And I can be frustrated with the tangle. I can be frustrated with the mess, and yet I'm not going to do anything about it. And those, folks, those are just a handful of reasons that I came up with of how we get these tangles and messes in our lives in the first place. Whether it happened slowly or whether it happened in a way that we, we didn't see it coming, or whether it happened in a way where we saw it coming and we didn't do anything about it. We've got tangles. We've got messes. What do we do? How do I deal with that? I want to give you some action steps very quickly this morning. We'll be done. How do I, once I recognize that I've got this tangle in my life, whether it's, whether it's sin and, and temptation or whether it's some other struggle or problem, what do I do about it? And so, again, this morning, I'm going to give us kind of some, some if, if I can say, you know, kind of broader um, action steps. We're going to get more specific about some specific tangles in our lives over the next few weeks. But no matter what the mess is, no matter what the tangle is, the first thing that I have to do to, to deal with that thing is to recognize that I am tangled. To recognize, to acknowledge it. To, to stop pretending that it's not a big deal. To, to stop turning a blind eye to it and, and deal with it. I recognize this is a problem in my life. This is causing me to not have the kind of freedom, the kind of life that I think God wants me to have. I need to acknowledge that. I need to recognize that. I mentioned going rappelling a few minutes ago. When we used to go rappelling, we'd take this rope and we'd you know, get it all tied to whatever tree that we were going to attach it to. And then you throw the rope over the side. And hopefully you've wrap the rope in such a way ahead of time that when you throw the rope over the side, it just unravels and goes all the way as far down as you need it to go. Sometimes that thing was tangled up. And so you take this rope and you'd heave it and like, whoop, boom, and it just kind of land, you know, just over the edge or maybe halfway down. You know what you got to do? You got to pull that thing up and unwrap the tangle and then try again. And what would, what would have been the dumbest thing is for us to throw that rope over the side, see the tangle halfway down this, you know, 50-foot bluff, and go, you know what? It'll be fine. There's no big deal. That's not that far. I'm sure we can untangle it when we get, when we get down there. We didn't, it just not even, not even recognizing it was there, not even acknowledging that there was a tangle. To be so silly as to say, uh, there, that's not a knot. Uh, the rope didn't go all the way down. Eh, I'm sure it did. That sounds so silly, doesn't it? But that's what we do with problems in our own lives. We say to ourselves, we say to other people, no, this isn't a problem. Uh, you're wrapped up in a mess right now. You're completely tangled. You're bound up. It's affecting your life. You can't hardly move. You, this, is, this is constantly on your mind. It's constantly on your heart. No, 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 it's, no, it's not. 
It's not a big deal. I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty this morning. I'm trying to help us all recognize there's times in our lives when we do that. And until I even recognize and acknowledge that there's a tangle in my life in the, fir- in the first place, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it. God's people wrestle with this. In the book of Jeremiah, if you go back to the Old Testament, Jeremiah was a prophet several hundred years before Jesus was on this earth. And God's people were making these choices. They were making these ungodly choices. They were, they were hurting people. They were hurting themselves. They were doing all sorts of things that God didn't want them to. And they were constantly showing up at the temple, the big church building, and just pa- painting on their smiles and going, everything is fine. And, and we're still on God's side, and he's still on our side, and life is good. And life wasn't good. And God calls them on it. In Jeremiah chapter 7, beginning verse 9, he says, Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house which bears my name and say, We're safe. Safe to do all these detestable things? I mean, God is saying in, in, in our words, not as you are tangled up, you are in a mess, you're killing people, you're bribing people, you're lying, you're committing adultery, and, and you're looking at them, and, and if anybody points it out, you're like, eh, I'm fine. Life is good. Everything's fine. And God is going, everything is not fine. Look at how tangled up you are. Look at the kind of life you're living. Folks, I think this is where we need to start. Recognizing and acknowledging, I've got a mess. This particular part of my life is tangled up right now. And it's keeping me from living the kind of life that I could live. I want to do something about it. But until I'm willing to recognize that, the knots are going to stay. That mess is not going away. Now, I want to go back to Hebrews chapter 12 again. I want, I want you to see the other action steps I want to share with you this morning. All come from what the author of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 12. After he says, hey, we've got sin that easily entangles us. We've got problems that tangle us up. He gives a formula. Here's how you start to deal with that. So let's look at it again very quickly. In Hebrews chapter 12, again, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let's throw off everything that hinders and sin that so easily entangles, and let's run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So look at a couple of things that he says here. First thing he says, I need to throw off whatever it is that's tangling me. I need to get rid of it. I need to stop doing it. I need to let go of it. I need to figure out how to get it to let go of me. These, th- this addiction is causing a problem. This, this attitude is ruining my friendships. These actions are killing my marriage. This habit is consuming my life. I need to get rid of it. I need to be done with it. I need to throw it off is what the Hebrew author says. Jesus says it this way in Mark chapter 9, verse 43. He says, if your hand caused you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life uh, maimed than with two hands and to go into hell where the fire never goes out. And he goes on to say the same thing about your foot and about your eye. If you've got this body part that's causing a problem in your life, it's causing you to do things that God doesn't want you to do, cut it off. Poke it out. Now, I don't think that Jesus is literally saying, let's start lopping off body parts. I think Jesus is saying, you need to get serious about this. Maybe even drastic. You don't need to just stop with recognizing, okay, this is a problem. You need to start doing something about it and doing something intentional about it. Being in this friendship with this person continually causes me to make these choices or feel this way. You know what? I don't need to be in that friendship anymore. Being by myself with my phone or my computer screen is leading me to go watch some things that I shouldn't be watching. You know what? Get rid of it. That's pretty drastic, isn't it? Get serious about the tangle. Throw it off. Be done with it. I think Jesus is saying until you get serious about whatever it is that's causing a problem in your life, about this habit, about this attitude, about this person that's causing you to make these choices until you get serious about doing something about that, the mess is going to stay. Nothing's ever going to be different. 
I need to stop ignoring it and choose to do something about it. So recognize the tangle. Throw off what's tangled me. Number three, I need to stay on the path. Go back again to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He says, run with perseverance the race marked out for us. It's interesting that he says it's a race that's already marked out for us. God's already got a plan for your life. God's already got a path for you to be on. Does that mean that God has specifically chosen what your career should be and all those kinds of things? I'm, I'm not for sure about that. But if you read through God's word, God says, this is how I want you to live. This is the kind of person I want you to be. These are the kind of choices that I want you to make. These are the kind of people that I want you to be around. These are the things that I want you to do. There's a path already laid out for me. There's a direction in my life that God wants me to go, and I just have to choose to stay on that path. Run with perseverance. It's not always going to be easy, but run the race. It's already been marked out for you. Long time ago, I was a summer youth intern at a church in Springfield, Missouri. And there were some guys that wanted to go hiking one day, go hiking and repelling. And me being the repelling expert that I was, because I had done that a couple of times uh, you know, earlier in the year, I wanted to go with them. And we came down to somewhere outside of Harrison, somewhere in the Buffalo River area. I couldn't even tell you where it was. I don't even know. I know there's photo documentation of us being there, but I don't know where we were. And we get stuff, out, and, and these guys, they had on jeans, and they had on these hiking boots and all this gear, and I was in gym shorts and a t-shirt and a pair of tennis shoes, and I'm like, all right, well, let's go. And we start walking down this trail, and it's beautiful. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been to the Buffalo River area. It's beautiful, and we're hiking. We're, we're going up some hills and down some hills on this nice trail, and then the guy that was kind of leading the way is just walking along, and all of a sudden, he just turns and just starts going through the woods. And I'm kind of walking like, are we supposed to go with him? And everybody else starts following him. And I wasn't ready for that. We start walking through the woods where there was no trail. There was no path. You know what happened to me? I got lots of briars. I got lots of weeds. I got, you know, stuff slapping my legs. I almost stepped on a snake. That was really scary. I'll tell you that story another time. I, I got cuts. I got scratches. And I was frustrated because we weren't on a path. I got tangled up multiple times on that trip. The author of Hebrews says, stay on the path. You don't have to deal with the briars and the problems and the tangles and the struggles. It's not as painful if you've run the race marked out for you. Stay on path. Stay where you're supposed to be. How do I keep from getting these tangles in my life? How do I keep from getting tangled up in these different temptations and addictions and habits? Stay on path. Be the person that God, that God is calling you to be. Do the things that he's calling you to do. And the last thing is that the Hebrew author says is to stay focused. What is it that I'm focused on? What, what example am I following? Go back again to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. He says, let's fix our eyes on Jesus. I need to keep my focus on him. I need to follow his direction. I need to spend time in his word. I need to stay in constant communication with him through prayer. I need to surround myself with other people who are trying to follow him so that we can follow him together. We're trying to follow his lead together. There's a, there's a journey that our teenagers are going to go on this summer. They've been on before. We call it wilderness trek, where you go hiking up a mountain in Colorado. And on the day when they try to get to the top of that mountain, it's called Summit Day. We're going to try to get to the summit of this mountain. They typically leave before the sun comes up. It's dark. And we're walking in a line. We're following. I, I'm, I wasn't following anybody except the person in front of me. Because I can't see the person that's way up at the front of the line. I'm following this person right here. And as long as they're going the, the direction they're supposed to go, I'm fine. If I was like, you know what, don't want to follow them anymore and start going this way, guess what? I'm going to get lost. If I stay focused on Jesus, if I stay focused on his word, if I stay focused with other people who are trying to do the same thing, I'm not saying there won't ever be tangles in my life, but there'll be fewer and further between The author of Hebrews says, recognize that, that there is sin that entangles. Recognize that there are problems that come. There are struggles to deal with, and they tangle us up. The author of Hebrews says, make sure you throw that off. Get rid of it. Deal with the tangle. 
Stay on the path that God has marked out for you. And while you're on that path, stay focused on him. Watch the direction that he's going. Jesus said this in Luke chapter 11, verse 34, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body is full of light. And when they're unhealthy, your body is full of darkness. What I focus on determines my actions. What I focus on determines my attitude, either in a positive way or a negative way. And it sounds really simplistic. It sounds like a bumper sticker. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. It sounds so cliche, but folks, this is what we need to do. And it's what so many of us struggle to do consistently. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm focused on all the stuff that somebody else has that I don't have and I really, really want. And I get so focused on all that stuff that I get wrapped up in selfishness, jealousy, and greed. Maybe I stay so focused on everything that my political party has to say. And I become so focused on whatever agenda it is that they're preaching about, they get tangled up in anger and criticism, hate. I can become so focused on on all the things that are wrong in this world, all the things that that should be working better than they are, or maybe just even my own personal life and why things aren't going right for me. I get so focused on everything that's falling apart and everything that's going wrong that I don't even see the blessings. And I get get wrapped up and tangled up in anxiety and depression and, and loneliness and bitterness. You see what I'm saying? What, what is it that you're focused on? What is it that, that you spend the bulk of your time looking at and listening to and focusing on? Because that's going to determine your actions. It's going to determine your attitude. And sometimes the reason I'm tangled up in the things I'm tangled up in is because I've been focused on those things instead of what I should be focused on, instead of focusing on Jesus. I want to wrap up. This is where we start. This is where we start to get the ball rolling towards getting untangled. And we're going to look at more specific things starting next week. And I hope we come back every single week and, and look through some of these things with us together. And maybe it's not a tangle in your own life, but there's somebody that you're going to know that's, that's, that's wrapped up in a mess that they don't want to be in. And there's going to be some things that, that you can do to help, that we can do to help. I do want to end with this this morning. I'm so, I'm so glad that Luke shared the thoughts that he shared with us during our communion time. Because it, it, it kind of made me think, it, it's very similar to, to what I wanted to end with with you guys this morning. We have, a, we have a little miniature docks in our house. Her name is Bailey. And we took Bailey with us. We've taken her a couple of times uh, to go camping with us. And when we go camping, we set up a tent. And we've got, you know, you got the, the picnic tables and the camp chairs and stuff. And we want to keep, if we don't keep Bailey on a leash, she's going to go everywhere. And so we've got to keep her on a leash. But we'll attach that leash to something where she can, she can run around the campsite, but, you know, not go too far away. You know what Bailey does? You already know. She gets tangled in like 30 seconds. It's the craziest thing. We'll, we'll set her out in a completely open area, and, and she'll sprint this way and that way. She gets wrapped up around camp chairs. She gets wrapped up around the picnic table. She's dragged a cooler behind her before because she's just tangled up around in it. And it gets so irritating. And then you got to go over and you got to get a hold of her and tell her to be still while you're getting everything untangled. And then you reattach her and you're like, now don't go over there anymore. And about 30 seconds later, she's over there almost choking herself to death because she's got herself tangled. And it's so irritating. And there's sometimes, I'll be honest, this is confession on my part, there's sometimes I'm like, you know what, fine. Just sit there and, and I don't say choke, but you know. <laughs> you got yourself in there, deal with it. Oh, and I gotta go over and untangle her again. And if if you don't remember anything else I said this morning, I want you to hear this. There's never a time, no matter how tangled my life gets, 
by my own choices or by things that have happened to me. There were other people's choices. There is never a time when I am tangled up and wrapped up in a mess in my life where my guy goes, ugh. You know what? Just deal with it. My God never does that. As soon as I'm in that mess and I call out, Father, please help. He runs. And he starts to untie the knots right then. That's the kind of God we have. And if you never knew that before, I hope you come to know that today. And if there was a time in your life when you once knew that and you've kind of dismissed it, I hope you're reminded of that today. When Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Come to me, all you who have made really dumb choices and you're dealing with those consequences. Come to me, all you who are weighed down by stuff that was out of your control that other people did. Come to me, all you who are tangled up in messes because you didn't pay any attention and you kept doing the same thing over and over again. Come to me. And I will give you rest. I will set you free. I will untangle the knots. I'll get you started again. I will forgive. I will heal. I'll fix it. And folks, that's not a one-time offer. Keep coming to me when you find yourself in those messes. Keep coming to me with the tangles, and I'll give you rest. I'll set you free. We're going to stand together here in just a second. We're going to sing a song together. And if this morning you've taken an honest look at your life and you recognize maybe you feel like just your whole life is a mess right now. Or maybe it's just this one particular thing that's got you tangled up. And either way, you're ready to be done with it. We invite you to come forward when we're singing. And say, I, I, I want this tangled gone. I want this mess out of my life. And we will do whatever we can to help make that possible. And we will pray and we will ask God to intervene. And my God will run to start untangling those knots. And it can happen this morning. Don't leave here still tangled. This is a place of love and acceptance and hope. And we want to help you if we can. So please let us know how. While together we stand and sing. Lord, I come, I confess by
Chris Kyle has come forward this morning sharing some things on his heart. Um, many of you know um, Chris and Anita's story, but, but um, there's been a lot of difficult circumstances that, that they've had to deal with um, from choices that both Chris has made and then things that happen beyond their control. Um, he spent some time uh, in prison, but he's back here now and is, is doing awesome. Uh, working to get his life back on track and provide for his family and hopefully get to be fully reunited with his family in, in the near future. But all that struggle brings consequences with it. And he's struggling with, with depression right now and, and feeling overwhelmed as he's trying to move forward. And that's what's got him tangled. And it, it's keeping him from or at least affecting his desire to keep moving forward because he's tangled up in it. And so I told him, man, we're just going to pray about that today. And he's, he's got people that love him, and he's got resources to go to for dealing with that. But, man, I, I'm so thankful that he shared that with his church family. I'm tangled up in some sorrow and some depression right now. And I'm sure there's people in this room, people online, that know exactly what he's going through. So there's some folks that have already come down here to to surround Chris while we pray for him. Anybody else that wants to come down, you're welcome to put a hand on him or put a hand on somebody that's got a hand on him. We're just going to lift him up before the Father this morning. Let's pray. God, thank you um, for your promise of always being willing to set us free, for, all, for your promise of always being willing to untie our knots and to and to help us to help us throw off our our tangles and God we lift Chris up to you right now we know God that you are already hearing his heart that you already know uh, where he is and that you are already running to rescue God we just pray we pray for that to happen we pray that you help him to see the good things that are happening in his life right now. And, and God, help him to stay focused on that, to stay focused on you and stay focused on, on continuing to move forward and becoming the man that, that he can be for his family. And God, there's, as he's doing that, there's going to be such a desire on our enemy's part to knock him down, to rob him of joy to rob him of peace to cause him to feel like he's not good enough and he might as well give up and God I pray that you protect him from those thoughts I pray that you protect him from our enemy that causes him to feel that way and that you would you would shield him that you would help him to stay strong um, that you would release him from this tangle of anxiety and depression that he's in and whatever we can do God to encourage him or just to help he and, and Anita and to help with their kids. God, make that obvious to us as well. We lift him up to you today, God, and ask you to set him free, believing that you are already moving to answer. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to, uh, one of our shepherds, uh, Chris Horton, is going to come make a quick announcement and then wrap us up with prayer. And then we'll have one more song after that.
I've known a lot of men in my life who uh, have worked really hard to provide for their family, my dad being one of them. I don't think I've ever seen anybody work as hard as Chris Kyle. Put this family in your prayers. Good people. I said I wasn't going to talk about this this morning, but... We had a really good friend pass on Friday. Some of you know the Hadleys from Center Street. Karen died unexpectedly Friday. She was young. So, um, I pray that you keep that family in your prayers. They need them. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in their life. I'm afraid to be with Connie. Uh, she and Karen. She and Karen have been close since they were, well, probably as long as they can remember. Uh, inseparable is a really good word to uh, to describe their relationship. So, I remember those folks this week. I want to transition to something a little better. How many of you guys know that we actually have a security team here? Okay, a few. We have a group of folks who are... At the front doors, they're in the back. They're scattered through this auditorium just as a way to make sure that we can respond to any situations that occur, whether it be something that is just too horrific to think about. To first responders who are trained in CPR and, and things of that nature. So. But we've been needing somebody to uh, take the lead of that group. We've got some really good folks who are active in it and help us keep things scheduled. Um, but we've, we've needed somebody to kind of take the lead on that. Typically, we would ask for recommendations from our congregation uh, for somebody to be a deacon. But... Uh, We've, we've, we've talked about this for a long time. We've thought and we've prayed about it. And, and uh, we came to a consensus that we thought Sheldon McKenzie would be the right person to do that. Sheldon has a military MP background. Um, we just felt like uh, uh, he would be a, uh, a good leader of that group. And so, Sheldon, would you and Bethany, and you want to bring the girls up? Josie's like, do I have to? If I could get the elders to come up, we're gonna we're gonna pray over these folks. We have Sheldon and Bethany McKenzie and their two girls. What's your name again? I know what your name is. This is Josie and Micah. This is trouble and double trouble for those of you who don't know. So, uh, but we're gonna pray over these folks um, to uh, to bless their family and the, the work that they're gonna do here with us. Let's pray. Our Father, we, we come before you this morning to, uh, to ask a blessing on the McKenzie's as, uh, as Sheldon takes on the lead of our security team and, and uh, the importance that the support of his family uh, to be effective in that role. We pray that you Bless them. We ask that you uh, always walk along with them, that you put your arms around them and protect them. Uh, we're so thankful for their willingness to do this. And we pray that, uh, uh, that each of us here uh, reach out to support them. 
Lord, we, we thank you so much for the love that you've shown us through your son. We pray that you walk with each of us. Help us to uh, help us to remember our purpose. Pray that you give us opportunities to share the love that you've shown us. Pray that you give us those opportunities soon. And we pray that you give us the courage to take advantage of those. Lord, thank you for the love of this congregation. We thank you for the people and the way that we care for each other. Thank you for putting us together. And as always, we pray that everything that we do is is, is pleasing to you. We, we want to make sure we're doing it your way, not ours. So walk with us. Help us to, uh, help us to support uh, each of our uh, ministry leads and uh, uh, to be a part of this family, to engage, uh, to engage with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Sunday to be here. I'm hoping, glad everybody was able to be here today. I want to remind everybody uh, we have a couple of ways to give. You can give online or you can give in the baskets out here. So if you feel inclined to do that, uh, feel free to jump up there and do that. All right, let's all stand up. We'll have one more song and then we'll be on our way. The cross, our way to freedom, the cross, our wrath to bear. But God, so rich in mercy, took our place and saved us there. Lift him up, oh, praise to Jesus. Lift him up for all to see. Lift him up, the cross of Calvary. Where mercy died to set us free, our King who reigns victorious now sits upon His throne. Forever He is worshipped, glory to our God alone. Lift Him up, oh praise to Jesus. Lift Him up for all. Yeah. 